the meeting of the Ronson Zoning Board of Appeals, case number 18-01. The Ronson Zoning Board of Appeals will be in session on Tuesday, March 20, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Ronson Town Hall to hear the following appeal. Jeff Apsey, doing business as Granite State Pioneer Group, P.O. Box 4201, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, seeking a special exception. The Table 69, permitted use Permitted uses in Section 8.1, multiple dwellings, two-family dwellings, accessory <coughs> dwellings, and renting of rooms to allow for additional dwelling units at the property located at 710 Main Street, Tax Max 10, Lot 50, signed by myself, on uh, March the 10th, 19, 2018. A copy of that was posted in Foster's Daily Democrat on uh, Saturday, March the 10th and sent to the following list of abutters. The clerk will read the list of abutters. So the abutters are 117 Main Street, LLC, RCP LLC, PO Box 253 Greenland, New Hampshire, M. Joshi LLC, 160 State Street, Kittery, Maine, Steve Ballant, William Brown, oh, Steve Ballant, PO Box 743, William Brown, PO Box 746, Cutter Family Properties LP at PO Box 190. John Fleming, PO Box 1023 Dover, New Hampshire. John Fortier, 684 Main Street. Matthew and Shannon Gennaro, 107 Old Farm Lane, Elliott, Maine. Granite State Pioneer Group LLC, PO Box 4201, New Hampshire. Anne Marie Hebert, 476 Church Street, Thomas Howard, 470 Church Street, McLand Development, Railroad Avenue, Pan Am Railways, 1700 Iron Horse Park, North Billerica, Mass., Lapka Sherpa, 9A Chandler Way, Dover, New Hampshire, Tollwood Realty Group, LLC, 404 Third Street, Town of Rollinsburg, PO Box 309, Jennifer Whitman, 701 Main Street. Okay, the members of the hearing the case tonight are to my right is uh, Howard Hammond, to his right is uh, Harold Cross, next to him is John Hinsman, next to him is Ron Shabbat. And myself, Joe Carwet. Paul Casalt is an alternate. He's not voting tonight. He's sitting in. And we have to the complete board. The complete board is, is present. And uh, I'll start off by saying that the Zoning Board of Appeals is really a, a judiciary board, a semi-judiciary board. We don't swear in any delegates unless the, there's a demand to do so. I think in my 30 odd years, we've sworn in. Uh, Witnesses probably two or three times. We don't wear cash or anything like that. We just assume everybody's honest. And that's I thought, probably the best way to run it. It's local judiciary for an, out, an outburst of the superior court. Because the superior courts, every land use had to go through the court system, we'd bog them down. We wouldn't do it in Ronson because we don't have that many cases. So uh, we have to, uh, I can't call you by name even if I know you personally. And if we uh, have to address our names so that the clerk's uh, uh, system can pick it up. And uh, so when you get to speak, uh, please state your name and uh, so the assistant of the clerk. So with all of that uh, said, <coughs> the appeal has been read to you. I will read uh, the accompanying portion that came with it. You people have got a copy of it too. Application for a special exception. You respond to 720 Main Street, tax map 10, lot 50. On behalf of a Grand Estate Pioneer Group and Jeff Assey, the applicant, we are pleased to present the following project for your consideration. As many of you know, the Blue and Mill building was a, an active manufacturing <coughs> business until the applicant purchased the building, Granite State Pioneer Group seeks to develop the mill building as a mixed-use building with commercial uses on the first floor and residential apartments above. 
This project will greatly enhance the building inside and out, and it's a wonderful opportunity for Rollinson to realize the goals it set forth in its master plan in 2015. Over the last few years, Rollinson has been looking at promoting economic development and attracting more residents. The master plan noted a lack of land available for commercial development, the meager increase in population as compared to neighboring summers were in Dover and the consequences of being a bedroom community for those working outside the town. The master plan specifically recommended the planning board market Rollinsford, update the ordinances to encourage private investment in downtown, and work closely with the owners of mill buildings to develop such properties into mixed-use facilities provided high-quality residences and supporting economic growth. In March of 2017, the residents of Rollinsford voted to accept the planning board's proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance. The updated ordinance allows residential uses in the commercial <coughs> one district by special exception and set forth the following criteria. Commercial uses on the ground floor, residential units under two bedrooms above and two parking spaces per unit. Thereafter, the applicant has invested substantial time and money meeting with planning board consultant John Krebs, developing appropriate plans and submitting the project to the Ronson Planning Board. The Planning Board approved the site submitted for review on January the 9th, 2018, and approved the applicant's plan. Ronson Zoning Ordinance 11.3.2 gives the Board of Adjustment the authority to grant a special exception if four criteria are met. we are all familiar with these. The proposed site is found to be an appropriate location for such use by the Planning Board. As indicated above, the Planning Board reviewed and approved this project. CD attached plan approved February 3rd, 2018, and planning board minutes dated January 9th, 2018. So we do have, I, I was telling the clerk I didn't have these reports, I have them here. The proposed use will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, will not adversely affect property values or improvements in the adjacent area. The farmer manufacturer, the farmer manufacturing use involved volatile organics <coughs> and resulted in fumes emitting from the building, large trucks with deliveries over Railroad Avenue and employee traffic. The building was not in good condition and when the plan was, uh, was closed, the darkened area presented an attractive area for crime. The proposed use results in a significant upgrade to the interior and exterior of the building. Ample parking, lighting and landscaping is also provided. The renovation results in an entirely code-compliant building, <coughs> including a hand handicapped entrance. For those reasons, the project will enhance the public health safety or welfare, will enhance property values or improvements in the adjacent area. <coughs> Appropriate and adequate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. The property is served by town water and soil <coughs> as arranged by the applicant. Additional parking was added to accommodate the combined commercial and residential use. The proposed use will comply with the applicable regulations of the district. As discussed above, the zoning ordinance was amended for the express purpose of encouraging private investment in the downtown area in mixed-use buildings. As required by the amended ordinance, the commercial use will be on the first floor. The 19 uh, one-bedroom units will be on the upper floors. The proposed parking for the appropriate for the apartments is located in the rear of the building and contains 38 spaces. For the reasons above, we submit the proposal be, meets, we submit the proposal meets all the requirements of ordinance as well as the goals of the Ronson Master Plan. We respectfully request that the board grant a special exception. Respectfully submitted, granted state pioneer group and limited. And that's signed by Monica Kaiser or Kaiser? Kaiser, sir. Not Monica Kaiser. Esquire, from the Hoffel, Phoenix, Gormley, and Roberts, 127 Parrot Avenue, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And uh, <coughs> we have the minutes there. You all have the minutes? Why don't you go read yes. the minutes? Or do you wish for me to read them? 
I think for the purpose of the meeting, maybe I should read them. The minutes of the planning board. These are the minutes of the planning board. The, the planning board is, uh, we, in fact, I'm glad that we got them because we couldn't have done much action tonight without a recommendation from the planning board. But uh, they had four members present. This is their meeting on January the 9th, 2018. Continuation full site plan review for modifications to the property known as the Blue One Building located at 710 Main Street. Tax map 10, lot 50 by Jeff Apsey of 5 Chauncey Creek Road, Kid Remain. Mr. Apsey gave, gave the, the report a status update on his proposed plans. He had met with civil consultants to review his drainage plan, specifically drainage at the front of the site. He said that the civil consultants were not entirely comfortable from commenting on the drainage. The town had asked Oil Tanner and Oil Tanner and Associates to review the plan. Having the chance of Oil Tanner and Associates presented the review of his firm did of Mr. Apsey's plan. He said that he has familiar, he was familiar with the conditions as presented at the site, having assessed the town's existing drainage system at some point earlier. He said that while the town does have long-term capacity issues due to existing infrastructure, he felt that while he could not say we're 100% sure that the increased runoff from Mr. Apsey's site would be problematic to the town, he ultimately did not feel that it would. The board and Mr. Le the chance had a general discussion about alternate solutions to the drainage capacity issue on Mr. Apsey's site. By and large, these solutions were deemed either unfeasible, cost prohibitive, or else aesthetically unsightly in relation to the real positive impact of these solutions. Mr. Haynes noted that the parking lot had existed on the site for a while and had not caused any issues, and also that Mr. Epsey was not looking to expand the parking lot substantially. Mr. Krebs added that losing any particular space would be would negatively impact Mr. Apsey's proposed renovation project. <coughs> Mr. Alley asked if potential <coughs> problems might only occur during significant weather event. Mr. Lachance replied that he could not say, uh, could not say for sure. Mr. Apsey then pointed out changes made to the plan in response to the review by civil consultants, which included additional curbing to slow runoff and the length of the walkway connecting the town sidewalk to the parking lot. The board discussed the walkway and most board members felt that it should be removed for a variety of reasons, aesthetics, maintenance, and liability. Mr. Hinsman reopened at the public hearing at 7.30 p.m. There were no comments from the public. Mr. Hinsman closed the public hearing at 7.35 p.m. Mr. Rowe proposed a motion to accept the plans as complete. Mr. Haynes seconded the motion and the board unanimous, unanimously approved the motion. Mr. Krebs said that he felt that all the waivers requested by Mr. Apsey were, were valid. Mr. Haynes proposed a motion to approve all the waivers requested by Mr. Apsey, which are as follows. Article 3, Section 4, Mr. Apsey is proposing 1.1 parking spaces per dwelling unit. Article 3, Section 5C, Mr. Apsey is proposing parking space dimensions of 9 feet by, and 18, by 18 feet. Article 3, Section 5A, Mr. Apsey is requesting a minimum aisle width of 23.5 feet. Article 3, Section 10, Mr. Apsey is requesting no provisions for detention, retention of stormwater runoff on the south side of the proposed parking lot, the side that faces the mill. Mr. Rolo seconded the motion. The board unanimously approved the motion. Mr. Haynes proposed a motion to approve the application with the site conditions listed below, the six conditions listed below. All outstanding fees be paid to civil consultants and oil pan and associates. Plan note six be amended to 23.5. On the plan, correct spelling error stripped to strike. Uh, four remove proposed site. Re remove proposed sidewalk from final plan. Five, change the retaining wall note to reflect a proposed barrier or guardrail replacing the existing note proposing a handrail. Add a note to the plan proposing either a retaining wall or a graded slope. 
where a retaining wall is currently proposed abutting the parking lot. Mr. Rose just seconded the motion and the board unanimous, unanimously approved the, uh, the motion. Approval of proposed stormwater regulations for new construction. Mr. Rollo said that Jay Stevens of Civil Consultants had reviewed the proposed regulations and had advised the board to add them to the site and subdivision the regulations as an, ad, as an addendum. Mr. Rollo proposed a motion to adopt the regulations as addendum C to both the site and subdivision regulations. Mr. Haynes seconded the motion and the board unanimously approved the motion. Other business approval of the minutes. Mr. Haynes proposed a motion to approve the minutes of the January 9, 2018 meeting. Mr. Alley seconded the motion and the board unanimously, unanimously approved the motion. Correspondence, no correspondence available. Mr. Roller proposed a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Haynes seconded the motion and the board unanimous, unanimously approved the motion. Mr. Insman adjourned the meeting at 7.56 p.m. The next regular meeting of the planning board will be held on March 6, 2018. At 7 p.m., the Washington Town Hall. We respectfully submit a seven percent on top of Those are the minutes of the planning board, which we, uh, I was awaiting. So we have them tonight, and we've read them and they're recorded. Uh, Yeah. 
just sign the plan so the town has two full size copies on file um, that are signed by her and stamped with her engineer stamp. The town has a copy on file? The town has two copies and Tom Clark has reviewed them, but he has a stamp. You know, it's got her uh, architect stamp on it. These aren't stamped, I don't believe, but the, the town copies are stamped. Okay, I feel, can anybody authenticate that? Yes. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. the, the town has a copy? Yes. Two copies. Two of them. <clears throat> okay. All right. That takes it one. Um, about, about the water district and sewer district. Um, do we have a recommendation from them? Yeah. The water and sewer district, I've met with them twice. And they said there's no problem with the capacity. They had their engineer look at it. Um, I've negotiated with them and uh, we've come up with a price, so I've agreed to pay them a uh, fee per unit. So that's all part of the conditions of the um, agreement. Obviously, they're not going to give me water no. until I pay those fees. Can, can, you, can, can they give you that in writing? She has given me that in writing. She emailed me and I can get uh, the board a copy. Um, but she did confirm that um, it's all good as long as I pay the fees that, you know, per unit. I'll probably see you at church tomorrow. Make sure she gets it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the secretary. We should have a copy of that too. Sure. Every yeah, recommendation. Every get to copy you. Yeah, I should have given you a copy. I, you know, honestly, I think the email was regarding the fees. I don't know if it was um, talking about the capacity that, but I did meet with the board and they confirmed the engineer was at both meetings and he did confirm that uh, there's no problem with the capacity, but... Well, they're meeting next to the end Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we can... There was no, no problems. There was no problem whatsoever, yeah, and they'll, they'll confirm that. I think we want a copy of that to put in. When sure. we get it to... Sarah, we could have that exhibit A in the water district. And uh, the last uh, concern I had, because I've, I've, I've lived here for 80 some odd years, you know, I can tell you when the mill traffic used to park on the side of the road all the way to the town hall up here in front of my house. And so the land has changed quite often in the last uh, four generations. Uh, have you had a traffic study made? I have had a traffic study that uh, wasn't a requirement. But if, you, uh, but if you look at the plan, um, because we've mixed, you know, we've, we've done the residential commercial mix, so you have, you think about it, you have different parking at different times of the day, business parking more during the day, uh, and then the evening is the residential parking primarily. Uh, that's kind of the, you know, that's the formula. So, granted, there may be more occupancy in the building because, yeah, you know, I think there was 50, something like 50 employees at Bluen. It's, con it's congested. Yeah, something like that. 50 to 55. And it was fully operating. I mean, they were, they were full on, uh, you know, pumping a lot of stuff out of there. So now, we, you know, if that building was full based on my plan, you would have a little more occupancy. But because you have residential now, it's not all commercial where everybody would just be slamming the place at once. You have the residential people in the evening more, that's more intense. So so that shared use kind of spreads out the traffic. And for your first floor, are you going to be using the rear of the building for your uh, ingress and egress? Uh, the way we set it up is the back of the building would be more the residential use. We wanted to try to like avoid the truck, the trucking on Railroad Ave and, and kind of move away from that. So, so if you look at the, um, you know, because it's a slope lot, it makes more sense for the tenants to access from the back and they only have to walk up three flights of stairs. And that's the new entrance, so that's going to be a brand new stairwell, all code compliant, handicapped accessible. Um, the stairwell that's in the building now 
is very mill style, you know, tight, uh, you know, not to code at all. So that we're going to build a new stairwell for the, the people to use and most of the public that's much more conducive to, um, you know, walking and, and safer. And that will be where the, most of the tenants enter because it's, that's only a three flight walk up. So then if you look at the front of the site, that parking would be more for the commercial first floor use, you know, first, second floor use. Um, the elevator is in the street. The elevator is a freight elevator. Yeah. So, yeah, it's usable for freight. It's a material lift, basically. Um, but we didn't uh, put an elevator in. There are only one bedroom apartments. So we felt, an you know, it's not like a family situations where people are going to have a lot of groceries and things like that. That's why we kept the bedroom bedrooms low, so that there would be a lot of occupancy, like a lot of people living in units, which would require more materials and use. And, and in, the case of, in the case of an emergency, how like, could they exit, exit the building? Uh, well, because um, it had to be all... Um, code compliant and meet all the life safety requirements. There's two stairwells, one on each end of the building. They're both fire rated. So our new stairwell that we're building, brand new, is a two hour rating. So that gives people two hours to get out. And that meets all the life safety codes. The building and the, the stairwell in the back we're going to keep, but we're going to upgrade it, make it a one hour stairwell, which complies with the life safety codes. So either you go out the back, which is a one hour, you one hour, you know, you go at the front, that's a two hour rating. The whole building is going to have a new sprinkler system installed. So the sprinkler will be fully functional and a fire alarm, which it didn't have. Full fire alarm, monitored, um, you know, fire extinguishers. My, my main concern with the fire chief. Everything's to code. There's never a fire alarm in that building. No, they wouldn't do it. The, the old tenant I talked to her about, she said, we don't want to pay for that. I said, well, you're not. Talking about people's lives. That's going to get done. Okay. Okay. Any questions? I, I have a question, if I may. Uh, well, we're talking about a mixed-use building. We we talked about the apartments. What are you going to What are you What are you going to have for the rest of the commercial part of it? What do you, what do you plan on putting in there? I don't really know. I don't have a tenant. So um, I'm just trying to clean it up, uh, maybe create the space. I've opened it up, I've, I've removed all the partitions, and then somebody would come in and potentially fit it up uh, themselves, if, you know, for the use. What is the potential for the number of businesses? Is what I'm asking specifically. Uh, well, you have um, roughly probably 18. Maybe like 16,000 max commercial in space. I would say more like 15 when you take out stairwells and areas that can't be inhabited. Then bathrooms and things like that because we're adding you know, new bathrooms. So you're talking maybe like conservatively 14 to 15,000 square feet. Okay. Um, you could use that for office. You could use it for retail. You could use it for... Um, you know, manufacturing, which I don't, I really didn't want to promote that. That's what the building used to be. But that's not, that's kind of not my thing as a landlord. I like to do, uh, you know, a building with more public access. So I like to have, you know, maybe businesses where people come in, get to enjoy the building, uh, or retail where people can come in and shop or buy something. Maybe, you know, more uses like that where there's more activity and vibrancy. And the building isn't just closed off to the public. Because I would have a real problem if you put in a, uh, you know, some kind of loud business, you know, downstairs or, <clears throat> or some kind of manufacturing where there are fumes and noises. Yeah. That's not my thing. That's what actually the old tenant. Uh, that's what they did. Right. Uh, they just were pump, they were pumping fumes up the side of that yeah. building with a fan. I mean, I couldn't even walk in. Honestly, I couldn't even take it. And they had people working in there. It was crazy. Um, and that's just not my thing. Um, you know, I, I, I like to do smaller units and try to maybe they get multiple people in there. So you get more mix mm -hmm. and uh, more small business kind of oriented. 
that he uses, so no heavy manufacturer. Yeah, that's not, yeah, it's, I'm putting, I'm making the building nice, right. so I mean, I, I would put that in writing if you want, no heavy manufacturing. Not that, you know, it's, it's probably part of this process, but it's not going to happen. And I've actually, you know, spent a lot of money upgrading the floors, I painted, uh, we're doing nicer finishes, kind of making the building more modern and more kind of, you know, inviting, like added a lot of light, things like that, which aren't heavy manufacturing deleted upgrades, you know. The last time you met this, with this board, you specifically said you were going to have all commercial condos when you required your variance for your solar panels. There was never any mention of residential property at all. So I'm kind of curious as to what brought this change about since then. Well, when we got into the planning process of really looking at the building, like when I sat down with the architect, number one was the parking. <clears throat> we didn't have the parking to make the building all commercial. So that was huge, because I know parking is a real, really pushes these, you know, projects. That was one thing. We only had so much land, and we knew we could only build up so much, because we had to do all new drainage and all kinds of retention and things like that. Keep, keep the open space, you know, as, as, which is, is required. So then we looked into options. Uh, the, other, the other thing with the commercial was, we felt if we did all commercial, it would hinder our ability to get good tenants on the upper floors because you're talking five flights of stairs, you're going to run a business and make your employees walk up five flights of stairs, which is unbelievable. Well, you're willing to make your tenants walk up five flights of stairs? No, actually, if you do the uh, residential, it's only on the upper three. So they only have to, the most anybody will ever walk is three flights of stairs. The upper three. Because they enter from the back side. That's one floor up from the bottom, correct? Uh, it's actually six stories, so... The no, no, if you went up from the back on ground level? Yeah, but you wouldn't be, all the residential people will be entering from the back lot. They, they won't even be able to come in from the front. Correct, but that's one floor above the front, no, level, it's wasn't it? It's six, six stories. No, he's asking when, if I'm a resident and I'm walking into the building from the back door, what yeah. floor am I coming in at? Third. Third, so it's two floors at grade level from the front to the back. Yeah, so, yeah, if you hit it from the front, you'd go up two flights of stairs to be on the third. So you're going to now hit it on the third. No, that's not. There's two floors difference in the height from the back to the front? Yes, so when yes. you walk in the... Is there, but it's a six-story building. Right, so when you walk in on the front, when you walk in the front, right. where the commercial tenants are going to walk in, you're walking in on the ground floor, which right. is also the first floor. Right. And if I wanted to go out the back residence entrance, would I walk up two flights and then go out on the third floor? If you wanted to go to the third floor, you'd walk up two flights of stairs, then you'd be on the third floor. And that's the entrance to the, the back parking lot, the residence entrance. But yeah, that's the residential entrance. So the most anybody so is going to walk up is three flights of stairs. Right. So what he's asking you is there's a two flight difference, a two story difference between the two entrances. Two the flights front. of stairs, yeah. But it's actually three floors if you count the third as the third floor. But sure. But two, yeah, right. Two, two flights, flights of stairs. Let me help Two flights of stairs. Yeah. I mean, you give me the names pretty well in the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. But as I said, the commercial um, access will be from the, you know, the lower um, okay. entrance. So I wouldn't, you know, the, the tenants maximum would be, commercial people won't be going up to the apartments. Is perfect, so. No, the, the application that you provided, you said in here, retails first and second, office third in 19 apartments. This doesn't say the same thing. This says use of the first floor in residential apartments above. I'm sorry, that's just a general statement of the criteria. I apologize. I think on the... Well, 
we read this in tonight, and I, I understand they they are above the commercial, but I didn't specify in my narrative which floor they were on. Clarification of that, Joe. But if you, I'm I'm happy to let the well, plans. Well, I mean the control. two the two pieces of paper sure. actually don't agree. Sure. All right. So uh, how do you want to word it? My letter is correct. Actually, that's the way. So it's this is correct. Yep. My letter is correct. <coughs> so this is incorrect. That is incorrect. The clerk at that. I think she was it's incomplete something. in that it doesn't specify where above okay. the apartments are. I think one apartment, the handicap accessible apartment, is yep. on the third floor. Yep, so as I said in my letter, the third floor is office, but there is, to make the building ADA compliant, we had to put one apartment on the ADA accessible floor. So there is one apartment going in on the third floor. The rest of it would just be office. And then Four, fifth, and sixth floors are all residential. So that's the configuration. I'd like to touch on one more thing. Shared parking. If I'm your tenant and I come home, whether whether I work the second shift or I work days and I come home, somebody's in my parking place, what happens to me? Well, they're not designated parking spots. So it's open parking for everybody? Open parking. Yeah. So if the parking lot's full and I live there, where do I park? Then you would go down to the front and use the front lot because the businesses would be gone at that point. When you come home, there's most of the well, businesses. Well, say I come home at noontime. The ch at noontime, the chances of that lot being full unless there was a party or something going on are highly unlikely because most people are obviously here on the day. How many spaces are you actually missing to complete it? Uh, That's a pretty good size backyard back there. Yeah, there's 40 spaces in the back? Uh, 37, right? Well, I'm looking oh. at... Did you do the handicap? Yeah, well, yeah, I think I counted them all. There's 12 here. There's 12 here. There's 3 here. 6 here. And 7 here. So, 12, 24, 36, 37, because that's 13, 38, 39, 40 spaces in the back. Um, and then I think there is 8, 12, um, I think it's 40 to be 22, because I think we provided 62. Yeah. yeah. But if you look at my lot lines, I mean, I'm pretty maxed out. Uh, I'm right to the property line, to the property line, to the property line, to the property line. This is my green space, and this is actually an easement, so we had to leave this open. So green space. Not a lot of options, uh, you know, pretty much. So yeah. you're, you're talking 19 apartments, correct? 19, correct. So the minimum would be one person, maybe a, maybe a couple living there? Yeah, you probably average, yeah, right, maybe average it, but yeah. I would say any couple's going to have two vehicles. Oh, totally. In this day and age, I agree. Yeah, okay, so even if, even if we're talking that, I mean... In 19, you're looking at 30 vehicles roughly with just the apartments, and that's only saying that half of them have got two vehicles. Right. So, I mean, I've, I just don't see where everybody's going to go. I provided 62 spots. So, like, let's say your example, 30 park, you know, fair, that's, that's a fair, you know, fair estimate, I think. Well, I'm being on the real conservative side, actually. Uh, yeah, that's fair. fair. I mean, they're one better apartments, but yeah, so say 30 cars. So right back here, we have 40 spots. So that, that would be 10 extra spots. And as I said, if it's, it's, if it's the evening and everybody's home, and even if they got people coming over, you've got all this as overflow. And it's all lit. It's all going to be you know, lit parking, so it's safe. And the planning board approved your parking? The planning board has approved your parking. And I guess I would just sort of highlight for you that one of the things that's notable about this plan is that the applicant hasn't expand. It's not like they've expanded on the building footprint at all. I mean, the building is the building. It is what it is. It's got the six floors. The only thing they've added is this area over here to do a better set of stairs to code. Correct? Just the right stairwell. Up. Yeah. If you look at the slash area, right that's over here. New, that's that's the, the only new area at all. Yeah. So this isn't a situation where the applicant has come in and they have really overbuilt or built in areas where, where there wasn't um, a building before. So in terms of the space, and the open space was a requirement that you had to meet 
Yeah, open space is a requirement, and we basically took the building that we had and just tried to come up with the best use for it. And that, that was the plan. You know, and this sort of goes back to, you know, the master plan process and some of the vision that the people who authored that had. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, how can we, you know, utilize this business, this area in the downtown, get some commercial use, no heavy manufacturing on the, on the lower floors, provide some high quality residences above. I mean, these are the types of things that people have, have wanted. Um, and so, you know, you can, the, the parking spaces have to be a certain size. Um, and I know that you got some consideration about, you know, configuring them the way you configured them and some of the sizes. It doesn't seem that there's any way to jam anymore in there. Mr. Rapp, see the, uh, the, the small rectangular above the front parking, is that where your offices are going to be? That's where Mr. Bloom's offices were. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, no, I, uh, no, I remember. So you were in the building when Bloom was there. Well, I've been there often. Oh, okay. Hundreds yeah. Of times. He was on the second floor. Yeah. Um, I haven't proposed anything for the second floor. It's just going to be open floor plan. Okay. The third floor is where you'll see on your plans that I gave you. The office. Okay. Office. Yeah. I put two office units there. Um, the apart handicapped apartment is right in this corner, closest to the ramp. Two offices. And the second third floor, same location. Third floor. Yeah. So you you come in here, go up the new ramp, in the new studio. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You come up here, new new ramp into the building, new new entrance, and then you go here and handicap apartment here, two offices here, um, but Lewin's office was on the second floor, which is right below that. That doesn't exist anymore. All that nice uh, woodwork yeah. ripped out. Yeah, there, there were times we, we were sending as many as three or four trucks a day to mail all his packages because he had something against UPS and FedEx and everything was by mail. And, uh, you could not, if, you knew, if you knew Mr. Bloom and Carol and you didn't argue with them, you wouldn't let them in his premises. So I was, I've been in it often. So, uh, uh, so one of the good things is uh, the back, you're not going to hot top that, are you, in the back? Uh, yes. This are you? Is oh, yeah. This is actually all pavement here. Okay. It's just the, the, the best way to provide parking that's the safest, all right. you know, for snow removal and Yes, this is all pavement, and then this is pavement down here. Yeah, that's been Currently, that's already pavement, but we are adding this pavement. It used, used, used to be two houses there. So we had to go through extensive, um, you know, planning and drainage and engineering, um, but we got that all sorted out. We got the water taken care of. I was concerned with safety, but you know, I would no trucks that used to come by uh, Railroad Ave, and that was really a, just an accident waiting to happen. Well, truck that's that's one house away from mine. Yeah. And it never did happen, but it, it was just waiting. You know, you, you, you don't go all the time. You, you, sure. And that's one of the that, things that we think will be eliminated with. It's like if General, it's Southern, be, General Southern Way in Route 4. There's an accident waiting to happen there. It's going to happen someday. Because people just drive too fast. Yeah, it's tight. They're behind me. They, they creep up on me because I only go 45 miles an hour. Yeah, it's tight there. I, I don't even know if your truck driver's going to like going there. So. But the downtown, no, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's going to be a little safer than it was back then with the trucks. Because the trucks always went in the back end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there was, there was uh, well, you remember, because when you worked there, there was the five bay doors. Right. So those were the loading dock doors. Right. So what we we moved the loading dock to the front where it's easier access, yeah. um, and then just left the one loading dock in the back for small items, small you know, small pickup trucks, things mm -hmm. like that. But we basically I took all those loading dock doors and turned them into sliding glass doors to let light in the building. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I got a couple more. Um, you mentioned you're going to sprinkle the building. How do you plan on pressurizing the sprinkling system? I, there was, there was a sprinkler in the building, actually. What was it supplied from? Uh, it's got its own, it's funny that there's, the main of the building comes in, like, off a of mid construction lot. That's where the main comes in. But it look, it seems to me there's another main that comes in on a T, 
Because if, if you look at the main street side of the building, there's a riser with a shut off. Yeah, but I'm trying to figure where you're getting your pressure because even the hot water tower, I mean, when you get to the sixth floor, I mean, it's probably, if it might drip out. I don't think it would do anything else. Yeah, the guy the guy looked at it, the sprinkler guy, and he said, yeah, it's pretty good pressure. He was surprised. I think they might have dropped another main into that building. I don't know who did it. It must have been blooming because it would probably cost a fortune. Well, what's boosting the pressure? The size, just the volume. You know what I mean? It must be the volume of the pipe. It's like an eight-inch pipe coming into that building. Cast iron balloon must have done it just to provide a, a sprinkler. I mean, it's a massive, massive system. Um, so we're going to incorporate that pressure that we already have in the volume. And then the, but they're going to go all new because it's got to be monitored, and, you know, zone valves. So when the fire chief gets to the front entrance, there's a digital panel. He knows right where the fire is. He knows what floor it's on. He knows all the information he needs to know. That, that's the way to do it, right? You know, that's what most towns require. In ADA, you're not going to go anything above the third floor? There's going to be no elevator for somebody that would need it? No, the ADA will be the whole third floor. And nothing higher? Well, and then also the first floor, because if you look at the plan, we've got ADA <coughs> spots right by this entrance. Well, correct. So this floor, ADA, and then the whole third floor. So basically, when you do a, a mixed-use project, every use of the project needs ADA compliancy. So it's residential. So that's why the apartment goes on the third floor. And one. One. But that's how you comply. And then it's commercial. So that's why that floor also has commercial use. So now you're in compliance um, of the regulations. Thank you. I just want to comment on a couple things to the board. And I'm, I'm not here to represent the, the planning board. So what I'm going to say is my recollection of what happened to the planning board, and that I want every individual on this board to make up their own mind about this project. But I do want to say that Mr. Aspey appeared for us a number of times, and I do want to address some of the concerns that um, were brought up and resolved, or addressed by the, 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 came from the planning board. One is that there was concern about, you know, if you look in the lower right-hand corner of the building, it's hard to see where the shrubs are. There was a concern about the water, you know, the, the, the water coming in off the parking lot and the, and the pavement. And an engineer, I can't remember his name, came in and talked about the fact that that was the best way to address the water, the way it, it's set up. Um, and we did invite the, the road agent, but as you folks who may know, the road agent recently resigned. Um, and the new road agent didn't feel that he could come in to talk about whether there had been a past history of, of water flow from that property down, down the street. But he, he didn't feel that he could make a... Uh, analysis of that, but we did think about that. The other thing we thought about was the, the light bleed, you know, across the street and in the back. <coughs> and um, uh, Mr. Asfi brought in a, um, a light study, and of course he's got the, the dual, he's got a way between not wanting to flood lights on the, on the residential, you know, sections, along with having to p provide security mm -hmm. for people using the parking lot. Um, and so we I um, think that, and I, my recollection, again, I'll be careful what I say, is that he um, tried to, to, to weigh that as best he could. The biggest sticking issue, I think, as the board discussed it, was the issue of parking. Because um, he, the fact that he had to get waivers for the parking, is it, it, under, the, under the ordinances, as I understand it, he would have, this is, does not, would not have met the, the number of parking required. And in particular, he downsized the size of the space, okay? I saw that. And, and, and one of the, and, and, and to tie into Mr. Shabbat's uh, comment is, so I think that there could be an issue about, <coughs> you know, the, the, the residential tenants not having parking. And one of the things that was discussed, I believe, is that, you know, if he has unhappy residential tenants, they're not going to renew their leases. Correct. Um, and to Mr. Shabbat's point, it would seem to me that he wouldn't want to put heavy manufacturing in a place where, where, the, where the residential tenants are key to it. But I do want to emphasize that, again, this is my understanding and my recollection, I don't want to the board, is that he could come back in the future before the planning board and change the upper limits to, I believe, commercial use if, if the residential use did not work out. So I think he came before the board at least three times um, and had a number of studies done and um, that 
again, I'm not, I'm not here to try to pursue, uh, sway the members, but just to kind of address the fact that uh, a lot of thought and, and, and revamping of visions went into the plan. And so, what I, and I, but I do, you know, I think that some of the points you make are very, you all make are very interesting about the, you know, the water pressure that frankly didn't, didn't occur to me. Um, but I guess that's the end of my comments. What I just want to mention too is you look at the home that's sitting up here on, uh, on the hill. Um, they've actually, I think, got a boost pump. <coughs> just up on Spruce Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah she thank did. you. She spent some money to put yeah. it on the Okay, see? Yes. So, I mean, that what brings in question is when we look at the height of the tank, you know, and well, wait a minute, yeah, it might one be a little bit higher than the other. Well, and when I'm, you I'm, get to this point, what are you going to have? An interesting issue, and I, and I brought this up in regard to a different project, is, and what I was informed by my, my more informed members of the planning board was that water pressure and usage is not a reason for giving the, the, the thumbs up or down to a plan. I hate to think what happened. Was well, well, well if, if okay. someone if, if thinks of that, if, if uh, probably thinks that I'm misrepresenting that, so um, that's what I understand is that properly jurisdictionally before a planning board is is water. Wow. Okay. But that's my understanding, and if right. I see Mr. Rollins in the audience or Mr. Krebs want to comment on that, I'd be happy to hear. It. I know Thanks. that with my uh, involvement with the American Legion, we, uh, the one person we're afraid of is, is, is the fire chief. They control pretty well your water <coughs> suppression uh, request requirements. May I address uh, Mr. Krebs? Uh, what, what, uh, what do you think about uh, the fire suppression system? That just sit in the hands of the fire chief. Yeah, I mean, we, we you know we, we would defer to the, probably a combination of the fire chief and Tom Clark to you know to make sure that whatever the system that that is required has adequate pressure. Whether they have to have booster pumps. Or, or what I can't tell you, but without adequate pressure in that sprinkler system, he's not going to be able to, be able to occupy the occupy the building. And I'm sure they're going to do flow tests on the sprinkler system to make sure it's adequate. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I don't know how it's going to be overcome. I don't know if there's enough head pressure coming into the building, or if they have to boost it. Okay. And if they have to boost it, that's you know. That that's one of those issues that's, uh, that that that. That changes from location to location to location. In Manchester, the three American Legion posts had to put in suppression systems. Others went broke, every one of them. Uh, Summersworth was forced to put in. Of course, uh, in Brownsville, we're way ahead of them because we're, uh, we're keeping up with the system as it goes. Uh, but uh, I, I, for some reason or other, it seems to be that that's a jurisdiction of the. Uh, yeah. We had to have something in writing, and I don't know what the chief could put in there. Maybe that the appellant is in, is pursuing uh, the adequate suppression system, fire suppression. And uh, if you could get that for us, I think I'd be comfortable with something like that. Yeah. What is a signature? If you could do that, with exhibit A, that I'm going to be speak white. Then we, I think we'd probably be satisfied. I don't think we'd get a clear cut answer. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, sir, I forgot your name. Oh, John Krebs. Yes. At what point during this whole process would, would the fire suppression system come up? Again, you know, the, the planning board is dealing with, with you know, site planning issues, you know, uh, site distance, uh, the adequacy of parking, the layout of parking. Um, a lot of, you know, and I and, I'll, and I don't want to say this, um, but, but I, I guess I will. The planning board has a very difficult time getting ever getting uh, feedback from the fire department, and we have waited on pro project after project after project, month after month after month. Understand? And too, so we're also looking at a volunteer fire department. I, I, absolutely, and I'm not I'm not saying suggest. You know, I, I understand that. Uh, my point is that, um, as I said earlier. And we weren't passing the buck, or we weren't pushing the ball down the field. We were simply saying, fire suppression is a building code issue. In order to get a building permit, they're going to have to satisfy the fire chief and the building uh, inspector that they have adequate pressure. I.e., if, if I was in his place, I think I'd want to make sure before I got too far involved that I wasn't going to run into a major roadblock. And, was, and I'm a, I mean, this is, I, I, I don't know Jeff well, but I, this is, I know this isn't his first project. I'm assuming he's, he's made that determination that he can make the sprinkler system work. I'm sure he's had a, 
you know, a fire suppression company in there to, to, to look at the yeah. system. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, to answer your question, I've had a guy look at it, but you're, you're, you're correct. He didn't verify. You know what I mean? He, he looked at it and said, oh, you should be good. It had a sprinkler system. But until they get in there and actually do it, you don't know. So at that point, then it's just going to cost me some money. And that's really what it comes down to. And then what, 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 what I agree with you. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I got to take one on the chin. But, you know, usually these guys won't tell I, you until they get into the job. I think any one of us up here would feel horrible if we said yes and come to find out, God forbid, something awful happened and there was no sprinkler system. Well, no, the, well, I wouldn't get a CO. Yeah, it, it ain't going to happen. There, there's there's going to be one. Yeah, the, yeah it well, has to be an occupancy permit. It's a requirement, and there's. These guys can do anything, right? They can put pumps as big as they need to to get the pressure they want. It's, that's not an issue. And there's no way I would ever be allowed to let anybody in that building without all the fire safety conditions met. And Tom Clark is on that. Uh, if the fire chief, you know, obviously would, would weigh in on that also. Give you, give you yeah, it'll, it'll get done right. I think what I would add, similar to what uh, Mr. Hinsman added, was just that the plans call for, um, they specify all of the various requirements that need to be met in terms of life safety. Um, and the, no one's asking you to take on the building inspector's role in this regard. There will be somebody who has to come, grant the permit, review each and every plan, and there will be somebody who comes and inspects and, and tests these things including the fire department. So you, what we're asking you to look at is, is the use, the parking, um, and does it comply with the newly amended zone needs? I, I mean, not to say that the concerns are invalid. I'm just saying don't take on maybe more than, than you need to at this stage. There's going to be a whole other set of requirements and so conditions. It, it, it's, safe to say, it's safe to say that the... Uh, the safety of the uh, the residents eventually would be taken care of, uh, and we'll have that in writing. Uh, we'll have that from uh, an exhibit A from the fire chief, and uh, uh, I'm willing to live with that because uh, I've done it with American, with American Legion posts all over the state. But they, not every community is the same. Not every community is the same. So. And eventually, the, the occupancy rates, the occupancy permits that the, the, the selectmen will have the final say. <laughs> Correct. Uh, when we come back down, all the work the planning board has done, of course, we haven't done very much because we just, uh, we should put our woods on here and act as judges, but that's really what we are. Uh, but you know, some of us have lived there a long time, and uh, we have to let our sentiments go back to our side. I see street cars coming up here like uh, my mother and father did. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I believe that we've heard just about everything that we we've, we've covered every angle of this. Uh, is it possible that we could move to a vote at this point? Yeah, I, I I'd like to have two motions. Uh, one, I would accept the motion that, that we. Uh, we use as Exhibit A a report from the fire chief that would include uh, plans for the fire suppression. Somebody from the board would make that motion and second it. I think it would be nice to I'll make that motion. Motion has been made and seconded by Mr. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. No opposed, no. The ayes have it. And then I think Exhibit B would be to get a report from the water district <coughs> in, in writing. And I think it would be a, a simple process, but, but the, here we again, it's, uh, it's, it's something that should be addressed. It's uh, one of our requirements for variances, and I would uh, accept a, a motion for the same. I'll make that motion. Mr. Shabbat. I'll second that motion. Also. Mr. Mr. Uh, Hammond has seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. That's exhibit B. That's it. That would be included with the minutes. Is that a, is that a hardship to you, sir? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, now we're going to be voting then on... Go public comments? Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 the public. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got anything to say? Yes, sir.
Steve Ballant. Yes, Steve. Railroad Avenue. You need my PO box? I got you. Okay. Uh, I actually have a, a few issues that I'd like to bring to the attention of the, board, uh, the uh, zoning board. Um, the primary one being traffic on Railroad Avenue. Uh, as it is right now, there are only four residences that use that for traffic to park uh, off the street. Um, myself being one of them, uh, John Fortier, he has his entrance to the driveway off of Railroad Ave. There's some parking across the street from me, and there's a single stall on the corner there at Main Street. Um, the street, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Railroad Avenue. It's a very narrow street. It's pretty rutted up right now. Uh, one of the things that I saw during the winter is that people were parking cars over at the end of the street, and the plows were having to go around them. Um, I don't know what the situation was with that, but the street is only paved two-thirds of the way, and then the final third of the way, just past my property, or just past my uh, driveway, is uh, actually just dirt like the current parking lot is behind the building. So one of the things that, as you guys were talking about drainage, it came up is that if he paves that parking lot, as it is right now, we have big puddles of standing water on Railroad Avenue because the uh, storm drain runoff is completely clogged with sand, and there is none. It just dissipates off to the sides or it gets splashed out. And the area around the manhole cover in the, in the middle of the street is constantly deteriorating from the traffic. So if they put in a paved parking lot and some of that rain runoff comes onto Railroad Ave now, now we've got a potential flooding situation there. Um, the other thing is that we currently have on-street parking. It's, there's no posted signs saying that you cannot park on Railroad Avenue. So if you have guests that find that the parking lot is full and they park on Railroad Avenue, that would again severely narrow down to the point, if you had a car parked on each side, there is no way two cars could pa uh, pass each other on Railroad Avenue. It would be down to a single lane of traffic. And God forbid there's some kind of emergency and they have to come through there with a fire truck. That would severely hinder that. Um, the uh, sidewalk situation there doesn't exist. So I have a son that's confined to a wheelchair. And currently, for him to make the 150, 200 foot trek from our driveway to the little store at the top of the hill there, he has to go into the street because there is no sidewalk. So my concern is that if he's making that trek and someone's coming home from work and they're distracted or whatever, he's a prime target in that drive in that uh, um, street there. Uh, I have not pursued anything as far as looking into how feasible it is to expand the street or provide sidewalks on there for people to walk. Um, but given the fact that he, uh, the um, proposed tenant of the building, is going to, or the owner of the building, is going to provide parking in the back and access from the back, I'm curious how those people would now go to maybe a little store or to the post office or something if they'd have to egress all the way down through the first floor out that way or if they would come to the parking lot and come down Rayward Avenue, because they would find the same situation as my son would, is that there's nowhere for them to go. If two cars are coming, if one car's leaving, the other car's coming, there's nowhere to go. Uh, they're already touching the sides of the road. So those are the issues that concern me, uh, and I think they would concern other tenants had they, or other owners of other budding properties if they uh, attended tonight. Um, that's the primary thing, the traffic and the condition of the road, the drainage, no sidewalks. Um, and I just hope you take those things into consideration when you make your decisions. What's your name? Shannon, do you have a select board member here? Maybe he'd like to comment on that as well. Sure, all those issues are <coughs> really planning board issues and were addressed by the planning board during the planning board process. They're not really... Um, as I see them really issues for tonight. Um, if there's parking on parking on Railroad Avenue, they were illegal, illegally parked because there's no parking on streets at night. So they should have been towed. So next time that happens, let the police department know and we'll tow them. Um, that's a parking. That's seasonal, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, there are no plans to put in sidewalks. I think the applicant indicated during the planning board process that he was going to be paving the entire, paving the end of uh, Railroad Avenue, so that shouldn't be an issue either. So, And the rest of Railroad Avenue is part of the 10-year uh, highway plan that the select board has developed. I don't know what year Railroad Avenue is slated, but um, every road in town is on, on that 10-year plan, pretty much, so I, I don't know. The village district, which I also reside, was towards the end, um, uh, so it's not going to be in the next few years anyways. So I, I can't speak to the condition of the road, but I don't think that's, that's really, the, the issues that were just brought up were, were really issues that either should have been or were addressed by the planning board. It just two other comments. The, the parking lot drainage, the par that parking lot is actually sloped away from Railroad Ave, so right. there's not going to be water leaving the parking lot going to Railroad Ave. And then uh, the, the last comment is uh, it would make sense for tenants in the uh, apartments to go down two floors out the front of the building and walk, because then, then there's a sidewalk from the front of the building rather than going down Railroad Ave. Now, whether they're going to do that or not, who knows? You know. I can point that out real quick, just so everybody can um, Yeah, so there is the potential here. If a tenant did um, did come downstairs to leave and they want to go to the store, the store is over here. There is a door right here that faces Main Street, and this is a gravel road. So they can come out this door, which is actually the second floor of the building, and they can go walk to the store because there is a sidewalk here all the way up to the store. So chances are, instead of walking through the parking lot, they'll probably be using this front entrance It does face the front of the building. So that gives people an option. Because obviously I wanted to give people access to the downtown. So if they come out this um, gravel way here, they can get onto the sidewalk and have access to downtown or up to the town hall. And as John said, all this water pitches away it goes into the swale and then it's treated and then this pond slows it down. So basically there's zero runoff from this point. And we are going to pave this portion of Railroad Ave as part of my project. Um, I agreed to pave part of the town road. Um, so that will clean that up. Um, if we got some extra pavement we will happily fill all those potholes but that will probably take a whole truck. Because you're exactly right, the road's in poor condition. So, Mr. Rapsi, when, when you're hot topping the rear end, are you proposing that you're going to be completing uh, railroad ad from where it's uh, partially paved right now? Yeah, yes. we're, this is all. The tracks used to go, that's not paved. Yeah, if you look at, at this plan, my property line is right here. Yeah. So, I'm paving railroad ad over my property line. I'm going to pave this part of railroad ad. Because an hour ago, you, you, you heard me uh, say that that's a, it's an accident waiting to happen. Yeah, it, it's, you know, railroad house is tight. I, I agree, it's tight. So we've, we've widened this so it's easy to get in and out, so there's no visibility issues here. Actually, the planning board made me take out these two spots because we dealt with that, the, the field division here. So it, it's a nicer suite, and it's, it's the aisle width is compliant with the zoning. Um, and, that, and that was something that we, we definitely talked about. And now we have lighting, so that makes it safer. The lighting fills this whole area, so now people can see, because I don't think there's, uh, I don't know, there's a street there's light. A street light. Right? Yeah, so there's a street light down here, but now this would take care of this portion of you know, Railroad Ave. So we try to do our best with that, and, um, and then obviously, yeah, people can walk. They can certainly walk. They don't have to take their car if they need to go to the store. Um, that See, that, yeah, that would make sense, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any other... So at this point, pedestrian access uh, on that street without a sidewalk would be restricted just by family? Mm -hmm. To which street? What are you talking about? Railroad Avenue. In other words, uh, it, it, because of all these solutions you have for your tenants, the only piece of people be affected by Railroad Avenue would not be me. Uh, I, I think what he's saying without is... A sidewalk, without a sidewalk in a busy street. That's what right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, you, there is a sidewalk, isn't there? There is a, there is a oh, small okay. bit of sidewalk next to the corner uh, alongside. It's about this wide. Oh, it's okay. behind a granite curb, and it's, it's probably about 30 feet long. 
And it yeah. goes from Main Street up to the garage of the first house on Main Street. There's nothing on my side of the street. No I got you, yeah, because I noticed some kind of curbing and stuff here as they come yep. around the corner, and then there's curbing here, right? And, I, and I'm not even yeah. sure if that's public or private, because I abut Railroad Avenue directly. So. Yeah, so basically, yeah, I don't think a lot of pedestrians would be using that. They would probably go right to the sidewalk. Like I suggested, my yes. family would be the only right. one using it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seems to be we're the singular people that are affected by this. I think the only sidewalk there is a sidewalk that my grandmother put in uh, 70 years ago. Yeah. On the, on the, uh, these, these, uh, the, yeah, the, the yep. western side. Yep. So that, that's the days when the trains used to stop here three right. times a day, too. You know? Yeah, I've got um, one other thing. I, leaving aside the railroad out problems. If we assume for a minute that you actually have enough parking during the summer for the proposed use, what's going to happen come winter? I am not seeing any place in this plan for you to put the snow, and uh, I am not seeing that you've got enough extra spaces that you can afford to lose any of them to snow piles. That's a good question. There is um, some required some required town flat notes that talked about where the snow would be stored. There's, it says here that there's snow storage areas. Yeah, if you look at the plan, uh, all these areas are designated snow storage. So you have this whole area here. How this wide area is here. that? Uh, was it eight, eight foot? Is the setback? You're talking ten feet. It's probably ten feet. And then you have this whole area here, which is another probably ten feet. This whole area here. Which Doesn't is, that one on the north edge uh, butt up against where the, the uh, railroad tracks are? Yeah, yeah, this is the railroad. Um, I just want to make sure everybody can see this. It's clear. Everybody but the camera can see this. <laughs> so this is railroad, the railroad tracks, and actually there's a grant curve. I'm sure everybody who's skipped across here has jumped over that grant curve. This is a grant curve right here. So this this line is a grant curve. So the tracks are actually over here, quite a ways away. Okay. So this whole area is vegetated. So as long you know, th this is. Ample room for snow storage, but obviously um, not even anywhere close to the tracks as far as a big snow snow bank, and there's no visibility issues. And then we, we do have designated snow storage here, here, and uh, this. Actually, if we don't do this wall, which we may not have to do, we might just do a slope and then a nice granite wall here, like a hand stack. Then we would even have more snow storage capability right here because this. We just thought it might be nicer with a gradual slope, a grassy slope, and just eliminate that wall so we wouldn't have, because that would be an issue. Like I know on your properties, yeah. what do you do? Physically remove it, right? Like I We push it sideways because we took snow removal into account when we installed anything vertical. So right. it can all go to the end of the vertical area, but your end of the vertical area would be Main Street. Yeah, so, so, obviously that's and yeah. so that's why we actually decided that um, we might just go to the slope there, make it softer, and just additional snow storage would be possible there. Cause obviously and the um, snow storage area on the east end of that parking lot, uh, you've got sufficient drainage to uh, account for, yeah, for, Here. for that melt-off. Um, well, that's actually uh, that rip rip wrap hill. Right. So you know that I think that would that's designed to absorb it. I mean, obviously, if we can only put so much snow there before it goes onto your property. So if it was coming onto your property at that point, you'd say, "Hey, Jeff, get the snow off my property," and then I would do that, and then we would you know mitigate that situation. Probably move it over here. Okay. But yeah, that's riprap, which actually I would think would be a good winter absorption material because the loam freezes, so that sheets off, but the riprap actually doesn't freeze, so it's, it, it probably would have ability, you know, at that point to okay. absorb water. So.
include one of the schemes anyway. Uh, all snow shall be stored in the areas depicted on this plan. We have that in the script. And we're going to keep this in the records too. Uh, any other questions? Anything from the selectmen? No, the, the planning board addressed all those issues okay. as well. So you, you indicated Anything that. else from the public? Yes, ma'am. I, um, sorry, silly Leopold. I've been following this case because I see right into this building from my living room. And I believe that a mixed use would be ideal. Um, there are people looking for homes to start with. And I'd rather see um, some more living options for the community than manufacturing on the fifth floor. That's just my personal opinion, and I think it would be a good use of the building. So when it came up as an ordinance a couple years ago, I was all for it, and I'd like to see the ordinance being used. Okay. Any further queries from the board? Yes, the you know, question I have, Chairman, is, you know, this a statement here on March 2017, there was a change to the zoning ordinance. I cannot see that online. Uh, the latest one online is. Uh, I don't know for some. Are you, I sent the whole file, but for some reason it hasn't shown. I had that you, same conversation. Would you like me to read you the, the text of the Warren article? I've got it right here. Yes, please. Can I have it? Yeah. Yes, I have it. Yeah. 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 Um, just the ordinance has been amended in 2017 to provide X, um, but uh, on the copy I found online, it, it wasn't there. My page 97 printed out with nothing on it. Um, but this is the um, warrant um, and the first page of the sample ballot. I only have one copy of this, but you can see um, there's the zoning article there. And no more than two bedrooms and two parking spaces. We have net residential units are not allowed on the ground and basement floors of the building, which are meant to be maintained as commercial uses. It's free to make sure this is the same one. Okay, because the thing that the direct contradiction to this is page 49, and I'll read it. This is under the section, you know, special provisions. It says, buildings containing multiple dwelling units shall contain no more than six dwelling units per, per building. So, I don't know how the technical regulations tie, tie together, you know, that one plus this one. Uh, I'm just... That's a fair point. That was noticed as uh, an issue, that section, 8.1. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Jeff's application said regarding 8.1. But I did one, in this one con contradicts the, the other one. Sure. Which is kind of strange. But this is coming in as a special exception, too. Yes, um, specifically to talk about that, Chairman. Right, and I think what he's saying is, you know, and I'm just looking, I think you're looking at a 2011. Uh, no, I looked yes. online on March uh, 2016, so sure. okay. that's not the least, yeah. Uh, just what section, 8.1. Yes, it would be page 49 on, sure. on the latest one. I just got it up online. I'll confirm that. Uh, section 10, the next page, so... So it's a contradiction oh, to, yeah. to the whole, it, it appears like. Well, number 10 says, so, oh, no. it's not clear. the board would like to address that if it was noticed as a 
request, did you treat it as a request for a variance? Is that why the notice was written that way? Um, nope, I just took it right from my email. Uh, special exception, um, table 6.9, section 8.1. Yes, and now I'm talking about section 8. But then there's, there's another section that that amends something, and I'm not sure if it amends this, which is section 8, special, you know, provisions, yeah, specifically 8.1.2.10, or it could be 8.1.10. There's a section there that which is just read, buildings containing multiple dwelling units shall contain no more than six dwelling units per building. And if there's a non-permitted use, you know, a you know, special exception can, cannot be granted only variance. But, you know, I'm not sure if, the, the, you know, this was properly amended right, because there's a vote, okay, allowing... Yep. Dwelling units, multiple dwelling units. No, no more than one, but uh, you know, bedroom. So, was the intent of the planning board whoever made this recommendation to change both, and what wasn't done, or was it was it the intent to limit the six dwelling units? Well, as I read the, I mean, as I read the warrant, it says that it seeking to amend table 6.9 and section 11.32. 11.32 is the special exception criteria. Yeah, there's Six, nothing about section 8. And, agreed. And that should have been addressed. Fully agreed. One but it does, it does modify section, the table in 6.9, and it does indicate that multiple dwellings are permitted in C1. Unfortunately, it complicates matters. You know, I'm used to reading a lot of regulations, and this happens often, and you have sure. to go to three s separate places. And sometimes one of the three is wrong. <laughs> I don't think it complicates anything. I mean, the, the amendment says clearly that in the C1 district, multiple residential units are permitted. So I think what that section is saying is if it's not in the C1, then it's six units max. So I don't. I mean, it, it, I think it's. I think it should be corrected or, or clarified. But I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it changes this application at all. I'm just looking to see if there is. I mean, I think it should be amended in the future to say that section should say except for C1, where multiple dwelling units are permitted right. by special. Agreement. I'll note that the definition of dwelling multiple or multiple dwelling according to page 7 of your zoning ordinance, says a building or portion thereof used, designed for, containing three or more dwelling units, including apartment houses, apartment hotels, and flats, but not including motels, boarding houses, and hotels. So based on that definition, coupled with the 6.9, I would say that that by definition, a multiple dwelling includes an apartment house and the indication that it's permitted in C1. Yes, it is permitted, but... Um, so, by fair point regarding it and some, certainly a housekeeping related issue. I think we all agree that 810 has to be amended. I, yeah, I can't tell you what to do with your well, ordinance. You have an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> you have two attorneys. <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah, I don't know what to, you know, to tell you about that. But. Well, that's pretty clear right here. Yeah. Um, this was a copy of the, the warrant. Um, it says, are you in favor of modification table 6.9, section 11.32 of the Longford Zoning Ordinance to allow residential use in the mill district? Question mark. Yeah. Residential use will only be allowed by special exception. Comma have no more than two bedrooms per unit. Two parking spaces allocated per unit. That's crazy. And that residential use uh, units are not allowed on the ground floor and basement floors of the mill buildings 
which are meant to be maintained as commercial use to create a mixture of uses within the mill district. The amendment, the amendment is proposed by the Ronald Zoning Board. This was, uh, I don't remember when we voted on this. Last year. Last year? Last year. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it may be as There was a copy that uh, we were given, and sure. it's been, so I mean, that brings up a couple of other issues. I mean, we're back to the parking again. In that? Two per unit. Right. I've, I've, I've always said that there's supposed to be two per unit. And there's 40 spaces for, for the residents. I mean, I think that in terms of 8.1, addressing no more than six units, I mean, maybe the solution to construe that ordinance is what Mr. Krebs, Krebs suggests, which is to say that 8.1 is there to address multiple dwellings outside of the C2 district. But Table 6.9 clearly says multiple dwellings are permitted in C1, and multiple dwellings are defined as anything over three units, including apartment buildings. So I think we're covered. Um, under 6.9? Under, yep. under 6.9, and uh, the criteria for the special eight, exception. 810 has to be amended somehow. It'll be next year, yeah. Let's have it, yeah. Um, but in terms of the parking, right. as a special exception, we can make we can make a new law. Sure. We can make special exceptions, <laughs> but it's uh, an area of wood acreage mostly, like the bank on sure. Oak Street, sure. uh, things of that nature. Because they they had the acreage, but you couldn't use it because of the gully behind. So that was a special exception. And this is, I mean, this is what the, the ordinance says, and this is how you've chosen to address, through the special exception process, this is how you've chosen to entertain these types of, you know, uh, proposals. So we've just, we've made every effort through the planning board sessions, um, as well as with the planning consultant to address all the concerns of the planning board which was noticed and open to public comment as well. So that whole process involving, you know, um, stormwater um, and other, other concerns which are valid were considered by the planning board in approving this. And then the next step, based on the way you've structured it, is that you come here and say the planning board has approved this. We don't think there's any health, safety, or welfare concerns. In fact, we think things will be approved. On the in, in land use, uh, would you agree that maybe we have the authority to use 6-9 as you're requesting two for this process instead of 8-10? Uh, eight, eight, well, the notice reads the way it reads, so I don't, I don't want to craft your motion for you. I don't, you know, Mr. Hinsman, if you want to chime in. Oh, I, I, Mr. Clemson has been involved quite a bit in this. What do you, what do you think? Well, I, I, as, I, as I said, I think that there's a, I think the ordinance should be amended next year to say that the that the six unit limit doesn't apply to the C one. But that's that's I think I think the uh, the clear the intent of this zoning amendment as it was written and voted on at March uh, 2017 town meeting, was to allow multiple dwelling units in the upper floors of the, bil of, of the mill buildings and the buildings in the C1 district, which is exactly what this applicant is trying to do. So, I, I mean, I think, he, you know, if, he, if you feel as though he meets the criteria for a special exception, um, then I think it, it, sh it, it should be considered and granted. I have to say stuff here for the applicant also because he's been there beyond a year. He's owned the building for some time. And all of a sudden tonight you're going to run into a roadblock if we uh, go strictly by what the book says here. I'm not an attorney. I'm an accountant as a postmaster. That's about all I was. In fact, for a long time I was a non-commissioned dummy, a non-city delivery postmaster. We had no delivery. Everybody came to the post office to get their mail. So we, uh, I don't know, 
gentlemen. I need some advice. I don't know if we can, we can amend the notice that the notice went out. I think it seems to me we have to vote up or down on yeah, it, you know, I, there's conflicting, there, there, there are two segments here in uh, 6, 9, and uh, 8, 10 that really conflict with each other. But uh, the request really has been right along for a multiple-use dwelling. It wasn't for five or six units, it was two, uh, two floors. And I've had my concerns, and they were really addressed by Mr. Ballant. And, uh, you know, that's Railroad Avenue, that's, that's a problem. I live right there in front of them. Uh, I'm, I'm not an immediate abutter, but I, I, when Mr. Bluen called me, I walked down and I didn't take my car down. And it's that close. Uh, it, it's, 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 that, that, that's the urgency that I see in this. The number of people re residing there was never a big concern with me in many, many ways. So. Uh, uh, we're doing a disservice to this gentleman that has pursued whatever he's been told to do. <laughs> he's been to the plan, he's been to the planning board time after time, and uh, now he, I, I suggested to him a couple of weeks ago he should probably have some legal advice uh, with him tonight, and he did bring the uh, legal advisor with him. And uh, Mr. Shabbat. Chairman, uh, uh, we have the vice chairman of the planning board here, and uh, he will make a recommendation to the planning board chair that the housekeeping issue that we that was brought up here will be taken care of. Did I say that correctly? Well, so I'll bring it up that needs to be addressed, sure. I, I, I can't guarantee it'll be taken care of, but I'll yeah, but I'll bring it I'll, I'll make sure it's I'll make sure that it's brought to the chair's attention. Sure. Well the legal advisor for the planning That's board is here tonight, right? I mean uh, yeah, I, 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 would, I would agree with John. I, mean, I, I don't see any reason why that, that, that section of the zoning ordinance shouldn't be amended. So, yeah, I, I would agree. That'll be done. I just don't want to hamstring anything. You know, we don't want to, we want a problem between the, uh, the CBA that most communities in the state seem to have because they can't read, I guess, can't read English. They're going to try French. I uh, do pretty good French, I guess. But, uh, you just want to do the same, the right thing, and you get, a, a, you know, you, you get an abutter tonight that, that really has a concern. I know about that that concern. I had a brother that was handicapped too. You know, at one time I feared for him when he walked out the streets. And he has one in a, in a wheelchair. It's, it's a deep concern. So uh, uh, we want to do the, the right thing. We want to do uh, what's right for the public. But being here all my life, I, I also know that there's a time where times change. That's not a cotton bond anymore. I remember it was a cotton bond with a shoot that would shoot the, the, the cotton into the mills. You know, that's a long, long time ago. Uh, the, uh, someday they'll take down the tank, I guess. I don't know what. That's going to be there forever. That's a headache. That's a hard <laughs> But that's something for the selectmen to handle. I'll, I'll be with you someday with that one, too. Uh, but I wish I was young, but that's the only problem with me. Uh, age catches up here. Uh, well, if you, want us, if you want us to proceed, I'm willing to do that because I think we have enough legal advice here tonight. We have two attorneys. We have an attorney that is also on the planning board that's with us. And you have the, the gentleman that I respect a lot because of his opinions. And I've argued with him too a few times, believe me. <laughs> And I did not come back to the board, but I promised to. Well, were I 20 years younger, I would have. But uh, not, as, not at 80. At 70, 60, maybe I would. So if we're ready to vote, this is what we've been voting on. We're voting to grant the requested, the requested, uh, let's put 8 tenths of that here. The request is to grant a special exception as provided in the request in Table 6-9 in Section 8-1, which will include Exhibit A from the Chief of the Fire Department, an exhibit which will address the fire suppression system, which is brought up tonight, which is very serious, and Section B, which will, uh, for the Water and Sewer District problem, it's, it's named that we have it in writing, that's no problem, right, Mr. Epstein? I have no problem at all. 
And uh, a yes vote will grant those requests, a no vote will deny it, and you should be giving me a reason why you are voting yes or no. Okay? That's a requirement from the Board of Appeals members. Mr. Shabbat, I'll do you vote. Yes, and I'll give you the reasons. Number one is planning board, uh, planning board approved. It's better than what we have there now. It's ADA approved. I think it's it's a it's good for the town. I, I think it's an overall exciting project. And uh, I want to commend you on the presentation. It's <coughs> one of the better ones that I've seen since I've been on the planning board. My vote is yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, my vote is yes. And the, and the reason is um, I think that the, the building um, has some special unique properties that uh, make uh, its compliance uh, in, in highest and best use difficult in almost any circumstance. And I think that the applicant has um, spent many hours uh, consulting with the planning board, trying to come up with the, the, the best use uh, with the, with, for the, the property. And I think that um, the proposed use of the property will benefit the, uh, the town and perhaps bring some uh, economic vitality to the downtown. So for those reasons, I say yes. Mr. Foss? I'm going to say no. And I'm going to know what the reason is. You answered all my questions, except I still think we have a safety issue that's been totally unaddressed. We've got a family over there. And secondly, I'm still not convinced the parking's anywhere is near correct. That's the only issues I've had. You addressed everything else to a point that I'm happy. If we could find a resolution of them, I'm on board. Until then, I'm going to say no. But thanks for a nice job. Mr. Hammond. Well, <clears throat> I vote yes. Um, I same way I feel it's been an improvement to the building. Uh, people need a place to bring more people to Rawlinsford. Uh, nice town. Been there all my life, like Joe has. And uh, I, I think you've done a wonderful job on what you've done so far, and hopefully everything will. Addressing all the issues we have, and I also understand what Mr. Foss said about the, the safety issue. I certainly do. And if all those issues are addressed, then I'm, so be it. Mr. Conway votes yes, and I'll tell you why. I'm very concerned about Railroad Avenue. I wish, I hope you could do something with that. Maybe as the owner of the property, when you're hiring the, uh, the, the people to pave your rear area, maybe they can put redress, re improve railroad ads somehow. There's really only one piece of property back there that you can't reach. The one in the corner is where uh, my grandmother lived. So I, really, I know a lot about that. that. That curbing has been there for 70 years, and the family put it in. In fact, I did a lot of the work in building that garage that's there. Your property was, uh, this Mr. Uh, Balance property was, was nothing. He just took, <coughs> uh, took it over and remodeled it and renovated it. And he's been my neighbor for so long that I wouldn't be around if he didn't uh, save me from uh, when I fell out of the ladder one time. But a few things uh, we've done together. Uh, I. Uh, he plows me out every so often. <laughs> Maybe I should recuse myself for that. Huh? <laughs> but being that we're blowing so long, it was almost like Daymart having the mills downtown when we had five 40 wheelers down there, 40 foot wheelers down there, and that was a safety mess. But we were bringing a million dollars a year in the post office over here, and nobody would believe it. And uh, Blue and did that. Blue and saved the post office over here, too. But his people did walk from the front. They would walk out of the front. They never walked from the back because it wasn't paid. And the tracks were still there, I think, in those days. So uh, if you can address that issue somehow, I'm hoping you will because the exhibit here and the conversations are all in tape. Uh, if you can improve that area and make it a little bit for, better for Steve Jr. to go out on his wheelchair, and then I can once in a while hear in the morning, hi Joe, you know. Uh, that would make me proud. So if you can do that, 
Uh, it's not a cotton mill anymore. It's gone through a lot of renovations from the Truman plan when we used to, uh, after World War II, when uh, we uh, used to drive railroad cars in there with uh, powdered eggs that we were sending over to Europe to feed uh, the people in uh, Great Britain. And then we went to a farm of food and saw a big pound of furniture there. Everybody in the village bought their furniture in the pools. And then uh, there was a giant, and then uh, Morris and Carolyn Bloom picked it up and revived it big time. And they saved the post office at the same time. Because the post office was going to be consolidated, believe me. Now, it would be kind of sad to have a, a town that's so rich in history not have a post office. You know, it, it would be really good, I think. With it, be people like ourselves, anyway. So the, the vote is granted a four to one vote, and I hope that you will uh, wait and have uh, with for Sabbath to provide all this information. And before you go for your permits, the review to uh, the, the season. You're going back to the planning board now for site review. The no, they are, already been done. It's already been done. That's right. You did this back to the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. At 7.15 p.m. A second. Please say aye. Aye.